Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto and bring on a bite-sized pieces. So today we're going to go over some pretty positive stories. And the first up we're going to talk about is the commissioners of the SEC and the CFTC have been urged by members of Congress to come together and give crypto clarity. And I think there is only one way to do this, and that is for different organizations to come together as a joint task force and get this done quickly so we can all move forward. Also, we'll take a look at a very odd story about China's NFT store. Don't really understand what, what that's going on there. And we'll just talk about that real quickly. And finally, we'll take a look at uh, how Bitcoin active wallets are on the move and they are increasing rapidly which could lead us back to uh, Bitcoin's all-time high and hopefully a little bit more of a rebound into the world uh, market cap. And then we'll go over some final thoughts. So we'll go over all those things. But uh, first, uh, some things to clear up. Yes, my voice sounds very strange because I'm just getting over this cold. So uh, that's why I sound a little bit odd, a little congestion. But uh, hey, you got to get things done, right? And uh, don't let things uh, bog you down. If you can actually do things, just go and do them. And also the second thing is I wanted to wish uh, my friend over there at uh, Invest Answer, James, congratulations for 200,000 subs. Uh, he is one of uh, seven or eight different YouTubers I watch pretty much every day. And you can find a, a, a list of all those people in the description below of all the different people that I watch. And uh, so James, congratulations, 200K subs. And he's only on his channel for like uh, less than a year, I think. So wow, guys doing, make, doing great things. So let's jump into the market real quick. Uh, we are at apparently 1.91. Trillion. This is over a trade the chain. Uh, different uh, places will say 1.94, 1.95. So, yeah, we're under 2 trillion. What a bummer. But remember, just not too long ago, everybody was going crazy uh, because we had uh, passed the $1 trillion market cap for uh, cryptocurrency digital assets and everything was like, this is the greatest thing of all time. And now, you know, we, we teeter on the $2 trillion and people are like, well, this is awful. Why doesn't things go up? Just putting in perspective, uh, it's not going to happen overnight. But uh, if you just stick around, I think there's going to be some fireworks. Also, <clears throat> just a note that uh, Audius here, let me blow this up so you can see it. Uh, Audius uh, here on the left-hand side or audio, that crypto is doing fantastic. There was a deal with TikTok uh, where you can either download or use the, their music for, from Audius, and that's a pretty great thing. And uh, I've been talking about uh, Audius uh, for a while. I've been saying, I got to recover that. I got to look into that. I got to do that. And guess what? I never got around to it. So yeah, all these gains are gone, which leads me to my next point real quick, which is this. Um, you will never be able to catch every single crypto that goes up so don't beat yourself over it i can't do it you you probably can't do it i don't know anybody who can hit every single winner out there and just because i don't invest into uh, your cryptocurrency doesn't mean that i don't think it's a value or anything else it's just that i don't have time to get into everything else and i only have so much funds i am not a multi-billionaire yet so uh for these things i i have to pick and choose my positions and uh for all the obvious people out there and everything else that i've missed congratulations i'm happy that everybody goes up i'd like people uh, more people to come into the crypto space so uh that's what's going on in the market let's just jump into today's top story about the sec and the cftc and to me I think this is huge. I think it's huge because this is really what's going to get some really big money <clears throat> into crypto and digital assets. So uh, here's what's going on. Uh, U.S. lawmakers uh, urge the SEC and the CFTC to create joint working group on crypto regulation. U.S. Representatives Patrick McHenry and Glenn G.T. Thompson sent a letter to SEC Chairman Gary Gensler and acting CFTC Chairman Rostin Beenham Monday regarding cryptocurrency. McHenry is the ranking member of the House Financial Services Committee and Thompson is the ranking member of the House Committee on Agriculture. So no slouches. They probably uh, got in those positions because they know a lot of people and know a lot of things and uh, good for them. So I will just say this, <clears throat> if you have time, Go and take a look over at uh, Twitterverse. Patrick McHenry looks like he represents uh, North Carolina's 10th district. And also Glenn J.T. Thompson uh, looks like he represents Pennsylvania's 15th congressional district. These are two gentlemen who get it uh, as far as cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So I would definitely follow them uh, on top of uh, Lummis. Uh, the senator from Wyoming and Thompson and all those uh, great guys, uh, uh, people, because we need more people like that that have actually sat down and done the research and are on our side. So here's what's going on. So they sent a letter <clears throat> to uh, Gensler and the uh, CFTC chairman. They said, look, rather than regulate innovation and job creation out of this country, 
Let me read that again. That's a, such a great sentence. Rather than regulate innovation and job creation out of this country, meaning if you have so much regulation that it stymies innovation and it stymies these businesses to actually adapt and overcome and actually grow, then what are you doing for America? You are hindering us. You are essentially tying both our hands behind our backs or at least tying one leg behind us and we're in a butt kicking contest and we'll never win that. So you have to let things just work. He states, we should promote an active dialogue between regulators and market participants, an open and collaborative dialogue with all relevant agencies, stakeholders, and market participants is critical. McHenry and Thompson explain, this is the goal of H.R. 1602, that the Eliminate Barriers to Innovation Act of 2021, which passed the U.S. House of Reps in April. I had no idea this actually, ha this actually passed, and, and it has gotten no attention. Uh, so this is one of the things I really need to d dive deep into. But H.R. 1602 is a bipartisan act, Democrats and Republicans, that requires the SEC and, a and CFTC to establish a joint working group on digital assets with market participants, organizations involved in academic research, and investor protection organizations, among others. Nothing prevents the two agencies from creating a working group under the existing law. And the lawmaker letters uh, concludes like this. We request a response from you and your fellow commissioners describing the ways the SEC and CFTC plan to work together on these critical issues. So here's the thing. There is only one way to really get this, this going. We've all focused our attention on Gary Gensler and the SEC. And is he going to say it's a security or not? Because... I know that at some point they probably reach out, but probably not enough because they're in these high positions. And even in the army, uh, you have just different peoples and different organizations and we're supposed to come together and we're supposed to be, you know, joint operations. But sometimes we didn't do a great job and reach out to our counterparts. And I think when you have to have a mandate from somebody uh, above you or actually who appointed you, you would have to actually get back into there and go, OK, let's sit down and work this out. Why do you think this is security? Why do you think this is a commodity? Let's get this done because I got bigger fish to fry. So hopefully they actually come together. And I think that's the only way to actually do it, because if you just have Gensler just sit there and surmise about what could potentially happen, it's never going to get done. I think we need the CFTC to come in. And this was um, this was my one of my thesis. I, I think just like uh, just like in, in the medical field, when I was a medic, you would triage things. So as, as things would come in, you'd say, OK, is this a security? SEC. OK, is this a commodity? CFTC. OK, is this a, is this a, a currency? OK, OCC. And then off you go. And if you just do something like that, you can actually get a little more clarity. Then the big money can come in and hopefully we can actually get, to, you know, huge, enormous gains. So that is what I was thinking. And then the last thing I want to talk about real quick is when we talk about the CFTC, you have to remember that uh, the person who is in charge, his name is Brian Kintens. I hopefully I said that right. But this is a tweet from August 4th. And he says, just so we're all clear here, the SEC has no authority over pure commodities or their trading venues, whether those commodities are wheat, gold, oil, or crypto assets. So in my opinion, this is my opinion, I think Brian here is probably saying, look, a lot of cryptos are assets and they are commodities and we want to keep it that way. Gensler, you have your own theories and then this is the disconnect. If they don't come together and they don't kind of just clear it all out and say, why do you think this is and actually go from here, nothing's going to get done. So this is the fastest way. So I applaud uh, these two congressmen for bringing forth uh, this issue. So let me just think in the comment section. Hopefully it works out and uh, we will see. Anyhow, on to our next story, the weird one of the day. Uh, this is very quick and I'll make this very quick simple um people that are new to this space they just hear blockchain and they think oh bitcoin or ethereum or whatever else right they don't realize that for blockchain blockchain can be centralized or decentralized it just depends on what or who is actually owning and actually doing things so we really want decentralized because it really helps uh, for security and really helps to actually spread things around. You don't have centralized control, which is what we have right now, especially in a place like China. So this uh, article concerned me. Here's what's going on. Alibaba's NFT marketplace allows content creators to copyright work via blockchain IP service. At first glance, we're like, great. Wow, China, who bans crypto every single day, apparently, is getting into the NFT market. This is great. I should probably buy some more Ethereum. Hold on. Here's what the story states. NFTs issued on this blockchain are minted 
on what's called the new copyright blockchain. Ah, that sounds fun. And what it is operated by the Sichuan Blockchain Association Copyright Committee. Remember, this is all in China. So it allows any content creator to copyright material via the blockchain and sell the rights as well. The copyright is basically tokenized and only the owner of the token truly owns the content according to the Alibaba NFT Marketplace intro page. So here's the thing. Uh, there's so many things to go over. Uh, Alibaba, Jack Ma, the CEO, he was trying to go public and trying to do a lot of things. And the Communist Party of China said, no, you're not going to do that. And they shut them all down. And they said, that's because we're a communist country and you don't, I, do, do you know where you're at? And we're just going to uh, stop that type of thing. And uh, we're going to take over control. And that's exactly what happened. And then also, you know, China kicked out all of uh, the Bitcoin miners. And the reason for that was because they have the digital yuan coming out. They don't want any competition. Uh, Bitcoin is probably the worst thing they could po possibly have because it is so, it is decentralized. And uh, they want to control everything. So with a digital yuan, what you might want to think of that as like a digital dollar, uh, they can turn on and turn off any type of currency that they want to or their, their currency and pretty much lock people out. So better pay attention. And if we don't like what you're doing, you're not getting anything. And uh, sorry for Chinese people. So for this one, where it says here, and it talks about that the NFTs issued are minted on what's called the new copyright blockchain. Uh, what that means, if we just listened to the story I just talked about, uh, Alibaba. What that means is that if Alibaba is owned by China, essentially what's going on, even though it's really not said, that means that they own this blockchain. And if they own that blockchain, they own this NFT. And if they own this NFT, this is not a decentralized blockchain. This is a centralized blockchain run by China. And that is the real story. So really, if we take a look at these, anything that's going to come out of China, you just have to understand that China is, they're done with crypto. And we can't ever, not ever, but we probably won't get them back for quite some time. So when you take a look at this story, you're like, oh, this is great. And, and this is all related to Ethereum. It's not. It's a blockchain created for and by the Chinese government. And that's it. Let me just think about it in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. And we'll finish up real quick. And this was, uh, this was a pretty good one. It was a tweet from uh, Santiment. And Santiment does sentiment analysis, but they also do some pretty great uh, on-chain analysis. And what they say here is that uh, Bitcoin is uh, inching back towards 47,000 as the long-term addresses activity is showing signs of rebounding towards this level seen around mid-April. Let me blow this up so you can really see it. So what we have here is back in March, April or something like that, when we see when we saw an all-time high of Bitcoin at 64,000, you saw active addresses, not just addresses that were created and weren't really doing too much, but Bitcoin active addresses were at an all-time high, meaning that the uh, price was at an all-time high. And this goes back to Metcalf's law and the network effect and the more people on it. And I think there's a caveat here and it makes a lot of sense. When you have the actual active users uh, on your network, that I think is, is a bigger uh, indicator of what's going on. And it really helps places like Facebook when they are trying to get into uh, the wallet of the advertiser. When they said, look, we have all these active participants and you can uh, promote anything that you want to because we have all the data because we stole it from. Now, I'm just kidding. You signed the terms of service to use Facebook. So they stole it all from you legally. And uh, that's where it comes down to. So active addresses. But uh, for this one, Bitcoin active addresses are on the rise. So hopefully they're talking about this is one of their indicators that they always look for as far as uh, where they can see as far as a, uh, a breakout signal and potentially back to its all time high. And that's what's going on. So some good news on the horizon, some weird news, and then some uh, hopeful news where the CFTC and the SEC finally come together. And that's it. So look, uh, there's a little bit going on. So it wasn't too long today. But uh, if you stuck with me the whole thing, I want to say thanks. I appreciate it. If you like that video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are time sensitive. So uh, consider subscribing helps out a ton. But uh, that is it for today. I appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.